Welcome back, everybody, to the Omniverse Comics Guide podcast. We are your hosts, the Omniverse Comics Guide guys. Eric, my buddy Dave. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Oh, I didn't do that bit. Yeah, I'm very good, thank you, dude. Very, very good. Just come back from rocking it out in Olympia in London. What? At the weekend. How was, how was the con? Did you have a good time? Yeah, we had a good time. Got to meet a few people that I've been a fan of since forever. Uh, who did you meet? I met Jeff. Jeff, I don't know who he is, but Jeff Senior, who used to work on Transformers. He's the co-creator of Death's Head. Okay. I know how much you love Death's Head. Yeah, I love Death's Head. So I met him first time. He was really sweet. Really, really sweet. And I met Gary Erskine, who used to do a lot of Marvel UK stuff back in the day, including Knights of Pendragon, the first series, and um, Warheads and stuff like that. Mike Perkins, who's an artist on Captain America, and the recently launched First Night, which is from DC Black Label, and that's issue one. And it's really good. It's like that's a great. very Elseworlds kind of pulp series so it's kind of set in the in 1939 when batman first appeared so he's kind of got oh, that original cool. look but yeah that's it's cool. a three part it's, it is written like stan jurgens has written it and there's there's f-bombs in it <gasps> dan i didn't know you knew those words so yeah <laughs> at least get a hanky <laughs> and faint like a proper english lady i think that's cool i think uh, i can't think of much dan jurgens Writing Batman. I know he's written no. the character, but I can't think of a Dan Jurgens Batman story. No, me either. I couldn't. I was trying to do the same while I was reading it. For a moment, I got distracted. Like it was hard to distract me. I'm not saying this to like oh, I'm selling this book. It was. I was sucked into that that series, and then I stopped from it and just went. I don't. I know he he was in like Death Superman and stuff like that, but I don't remember him writing and Zero Hour and and those kind of events. But I don't remember him writing a Batman series. No, I can't think of it. And I'm, it's funny because he's one of those creators that when people bring him up and understand, I guess, comic book history and whatnot, they'll always give him his proper bona fides, as they say, like his just do. But (laughs) did they say that? But no. But they, they give him his due, right? Mm-hmm. They give him his flowers, as they say. That's what Do they say that? <laughs> yes, yeah, so they give you your flowers. Give you your flowers or you can smell them. That's the new North American colloquial. But it? anyways, Dan Jurgen. speaking of Dan Jurgen, I feel sometimes he's overlooked and a little bit underrated. Yeah, I'd agree with he's, you. He, yeah, he's created a lot of things, worked on a lot of standout projects. That he was like even his Thor, like 75, 85 issues of Thor. That it's hefty. It's hefty and mm. was consequential for the character. And I think sometimes people kind of overlook it because they go Walt Simonson and Jason Aaron. And it's like, wait a second, there's a someone here who spent about like quite a number of years. Yeah, writing this character in in this world, he must have got something right. Must have been doing something. Yeah, so. I'm happy that he's he's still keeping busy and on a, on Batman. Yeah, as well. because Batman is like an evergreen character. Everyone's always going to read a Batman story. You'll be on the oh. shelf forever. I think doing it in this way though, it's it's quite nice. I mean, like there've been quite a few Batman minis. I was saying this. So I was talking to Mike Perkins, the artist, last week. And I was saying like it's quite nice because there are so many Batman minis and series and stuff coming out that it's quite hard to kind of pick. Which ones should you actually care about? Because they, they released City of Madness by uh, Christian Ward around about the same time as they did Gargoyle of Gotham. But Gargoyle of Gotham, they did a trailer for and everything. And it seemed like a, re- a load of hype around it. And they didn't do the same for City of Madness. And I felt really bad for Christian Ward because his series looks amazing. It's like a like a demonic spiritual sequel to Arkham Asylum. And I was probably more intrigued by that. Um, but with, with this one, it's like it's very Elseworlds feeling and there is a lot of excitement around it and it's justified it is it's good it's very good that's cool yeah yeah it's it's good to hear like uh that new comics are exciting and sometimes that veteran creators are the ones that are making this new stuff so so fun again so not again it's always been fun but yeah i'm, I'm always happy to hear dan jurgens is you know keeping busy and, and making good books mm. We are going to tonight get into our top 10 most wanted image compendiums and 
omnibuses. Omnibuses. Well, they've branched out, haven't they, to the omnibus market image now? Yeah, they have. They have, and they, I, I would, I gotta say, they do a pretty good job of making sure their books come out in all different formats for however people enjoy reading, whether it's graphic novels, hardcovers, compendiums. They're they're getting giving you a lot of options. Mm-hmm. Before we do our countdown, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, whether you're watching on Twitch, on YouTube, or listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen, and hit up the Omniverse Comics.guide website for your reading orders, videos, podcasts, everything's there. And there's some bonus stuff. The reading orders that Dave puts together, I tell him privately, but I say it on the podcast is truth. They're the best. As a comic book fan to comic book fans, they are really good reading orders. And it's almost like, how much more like what can i find that nobody would find he's got it it's there i defy somebody to find fault with his reading orders you know i saw at the weekend that i never see right it's just someone using the reading orders in real time so there were people coming over we had the the ipad set up so people can scroll through and there are some people long-time fans and you open up the reading order in front of them and they go yeah yeah and then they go oh oh wow and that's that's such a nice moment. <laughs> it's not like an ego trait thing, but it's like a oh good. This is this is a good move. This is the right thing. Go on omniversecomics.guide and you'll yeah. find your way. It's a map. It's a map. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get into our image. We're being specific this time about it. Um, we we're gonna do like all the publishers, which probably would have been easier for me, but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that's okay. No, it was good. I was really happy to challenge myself because I picked some things that I've never read at all. Yeah, same. But one I, one thing I found is that as much as Image makes, mm. there aren't a lot of long-running series. No, very true. That's very, very true. And the ones that are long-running series, a lot of the things that we're looking for in as far as compendiums and like deluxe formats, they're either coming out or they are out and they're doing a really good job at making sure like here's any way you want to read it it's there you pick yeah absolutely it's funny as well because like there's stuff coming out this year and a lot of it does tie into popularity of certain creators but even stuff like like birthright is coming out um which is joshua williams series yeah um, I really, really wanted to read it. I read volume one of the trades and it was really good. Like really good. It kind of felt like a medieval flight of the navigator. That's such a nice kind of mash genre mashup. You go first. Okay. Well, I've got a couple of kind of obvious ish ones and a couple of yep. not obvious ones at all. I'm going to open with somewhere in between, which, but I think a lot of people heard of it, but they forgot about it. It's Southern Bastards. It's by, uh, Jason Aaron, Jason Latour. Yeah. Now, yeah. I mean, that was originally collected as four tray paperbacks. It went on for 20 issues. It started in 2014. So it's not, I mean, you know, that's coming up to 10 years now since it first came out. They collected the first chunk as a small hardcover. And we were due to receive volume two not long after, or well, probably about a year and a bit after, let's be fair. And it never arrived. And I don't know why that was. I know there was in theory some controversy around Jason Latour which was actually largely unfair well I think during a period of time when a lot of people were being called out for certain behaviors Jason recognized his own behaviors and he kind of called himself out publicly apologized to some people privately apologized to those people as well everything was good but certain I won't even name them but certain news uh comic news websites decided to kind of villainize him further regardless it was like that's all been done it's a shame. It's a shame. And it's kind of been a tough ride back for him, but he's coming back to comics. But it's been, yeah, I mean, like uh, Omega Bread says in the chat, it's been forever since the last issue. So why haven't we got a collector edition? It's 20 issues. It's very, very gritty. I will take a leaf out of Eric's book here and read the the intro. So it's, uh, it's Welcome to Craw County, Alabama, home of Boss BBQ state champion running rebs football team and more bastards than you've ever seen when you're an angry old man like old tub the only way to survive a place like this is carry a really big stick so this guy basically his older guy goes back home um and kind of faces some of those older demons it's relatively short it's like i say it's 20 issues so i don't want to go into spoiling too much but the way that the the way that it's assembled is it's 
beautiful. Like the Jason Aaron and Jason the Tour can can really under, they really understand comics and they really understand visual storytelling. There's a great web there's a great YouTube channel and go check it out. It's called Strip Panel Naked. And the guy that runs it, he actually takes the first issue and examines every panel and the meaning in every panel. It's it's really, really nicely done, like really nicely done. So go and have a look at that channel. I don't know if he still does any more videos, but I used to watch those quite religiously because you just get that insight behind the creative process. But this was one of the ones he picked and just those few opening pages alone, this sets up the series. It's great, it's gritty, it's nasty, it's violent, it's horrible. I love that. So, <laughs> <laughs> Southern Bastards, that's my first choice for tonight. I would like to I would like to see it in oversized hardcover, please. Thank you very much. Nice. I have never read it, but the creative team I would be uh prone to trying that out just cuz I'm I, I enjoy most of Jason Aaron that I've read. I've I've pretty much enjoyed it all. So, nice pick. My cheat that I'm going to start off with is actually Joshua Williamson's Birthright. I didn't realize it was announced Sorry, I to be coming out. That up that's for okay. You. No, no, that's okay. Because I had began reading that series as it was coming out in trade a few years ago. And I liked it. And I felt like I'm going to probably be invested in this in a oversized format. And I want to, when those come out, I'm going to buy those. Because I want to read this in bigger spurts and not spend at once you get to volume three, four or five, you're spending $23 a pop where I'd rather just get 15 issues and get it in, you know, our yeah. deluxe format. So I've been waiting for, it seemed like a series that was going to go long, that he was going to get the, the breath to tell this story and it wasn't going to be a, a quick 18 issues. It seemed like there was an investment. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to let this finish or, or let it come out and, larger formats and start investing in those. Because there's been plenty of times where I've started and I've collected 12, 15 trades and then I trade those in just to <laughs> rebuy yeah. the same material in a deluxe, you know, high definition format. I know I'm going to do it. So it's like my jerk for waiting for it to end because I really want to support it and get it to that end. And you've got to buy some single issues or the trades to do that but this one i've been waiting for and i'm not joshua williamson seems to be the only guy writing at dc him and james tinian and there's a couple of other but he's on every book yeah or has been so i've kind of been like uh, I'll rather, <laughs> i'd rather read i'd rather read his creator own things because i've heard really good things about that yeah i, I want i want to give birthright a try and we haven't even discussed what it's about but you, you said med medieval flight of the navigator or even like there's that premise of someone going missing the search and rescue of that and then when that person shows up again very different but it's definitely them and why are they so powerful what other world did they go to why do they look like conan the barbarian but maybe cooler and what's the whole <laughs> plot here right what what's what's happening so if you just like that sci-fi fantasy, but also that sort of mystery, it's all there. And it's, I forget the artist. I don't know. I should have oh, looked it up. It's, um, da, 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 da. it's Andre Bresson. Bresson? It, it just, it seems that, yes, that's it. It seems like a perfectly matched team for this story. I want to read it. I'm most likely going to be getting it as soon as it comes out. Well, I didn't realize it was going to be 50, it was 50 issues. It's, it's fairly lengthy, isn't it? And it was nine trades. So but, yeah, you know, it's big commitment stuff. I think I th I'm pretty sure it evens out in the first hardcover. And do you know what? We actually, should we just make out that they weren't going to release the hardcover until we listed it on here today? Uh, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, but yeah, it was, I did the same. I did the exact same. I actually on, on the Instagram basically had people on there that said one day, like, what can you recommend? There was one guy in there. He was just going birthright, 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 just birthright, just get birthright. And I'm like, fine, all right. And I read the first trade and I loved it. I'm not a huge fan of his DC output. I don't think it's that strong, but that was really good. That was a great. I, yeah, I have the first three trades of it. I think. Uh -huh. 
So like uh-huh. I, I, did, I was reading it as the trades were coming out, and I said, I'm just going to wait. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in for the whole story. Let's just get to the, You're going to finish it. Wherever you finish it, I'm going to buy the whole thing. Nice. Yeah. So that's my first pick. I know it's coming out, but I guess we can say stuff that we – Either wish they would make or finally put out, or maybe things are coming our way that we want. Whatever Anyways. justifies it for you, dude. All good. That's it. <laughs> I told you I was cheating. <laughs> oh, is it me? Yeah. Okay. Look, there is a bunch of spawn related stuff coming out. They're releasing. Oh, hang on a minute. I think they're about to release Spawn Compendium Volume 6. They're also about to release the, what was it, the Dark, Spawn the Dark Age or something like that as well. Sam and Twitch is finally going to be released, which was The Two Detectives. That was written by Brian Michael Bendis. A load of Spawn stuff is coming out. I think it would have been nice if they'd made it a bit clearer as to what goes where. But you know what? Some schmuck's going to do a reading order at some point, right? Anyway, my choice for number two is Hell Spawn. So it was the 2000 year 2000 series went for 16 issues it's by brian michael bendis i mean i love brian michael bendis right and then uh, ashley wood is the artist on a number of issues as well and i love ashley wood and brian uh, ben temple smith as well provides some of the art it's a much grittier nastier series than the main series i think that was half the the selling point the other half being bendis was quite new to comics at that point he was the award-winning indie creator brian michael bendis that people didn't really know and this series launched around about the same time as ultimate spider-man which was also a 2000 series so he was just making his name at this point and he was doing a lot of crime stuff so yeah there was a lot of praise for it but could i get hold of it no couldn't get hold of it at the time and i managed to get volume one of sam and twitch which was also by bendis but i couldn't get volume two it was just a lot trickier back then but it's it's nice now we're starting to see these things come out in these nice formats so yeah hellspawn is one though i haven't seen any news about and being a bendis completist i really want to get my hands on it plus ashley wood man ashley wood is one of my favorite artists of all time that's cool yeah i want to see those two together because i've never read it so that's got to be quite the combination nice pick you know i've never read a spawn comic ever i did you read the del mundo series Yes, I did. Yes, I did. You called me out on it. Nice. <laughs> I have. But we love I you, haven't Mike. read much Spawn. <laughs> I haven't I haven't read much Spawn. Like when I think of Spawn, I'm thinking like Todd McFarlane and, and the Greg Capullo yeah. stuff. And now you're mentioning like Michael Bendis worked on it and there's all these other mini series of people, you know, dipping and diving in that world and I'm like, man, I'm so out of touch with Spawn. I wouldn't be able to recommend anything about it. Have you read a lot of Spawn? No, I read issue one, and that's it so far. My number two, it's, I think, an image series that more than deserves to have a compendium or some type of complete collection. I don't know if the series is finished, but I did have the first two or three hardcovers, and I don't know why I parted ways with them. I regret it so much because I would love to read Lazarus again from Greg Rucka. Oh. I don't know if you've ever gotten a chance to read Lazarus. I've got it, day. yeah. I'm not I don't read know it how you all. felt about it. Oh, you haven't read it all. No, because I thought there was going to be a volume four because they've done three hardcovers, but I swear we're missing some stuff. Yeah, because the, the way he was putting out the next chapters of the story were in like 48 page issues. So they were like mini trades. It's like, so you you might wait for an issue, but I'm going to give you a, a, a lot of story when it comes. Mm. And then you'll wait a little more, but you'll get a lot of story again. And so it was like, okay, however you plan to put it out there, but I, I've started these hardcovers. And then there's these big breaks where you're like, is it going to continue? Is it not? Where are they at with the story? But I desperately want to reread it because it was, I mean, Greg Rucka, look, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of times people say stuff like, if you haven't lived that life or that experience, you shouldn't put yourself writing it. Greg Rucka, when he, whenever he writes a woman... He's knocks it out the park. Yeah. I don't think he's ever lived the life of a woman, but I haven't asked him, man. No, <laughs> I haven't asked him either, but it kind of proves that theory wrong. Cause wonder woman, uh, Batwoman, Lazarus. I don't know if you ever read, um, white out. Like he's, I've got that somewhere as well. <laughs> I don't know where it is, but yeah, it's true. He writes very, very strong female led series. 
He does. And Lazarus is a great premise. It's a dystopian future, which is a old trope that people have always used to tell some type of story. This is really interesting because this is a female assassin that basically protects one of the final controlling elite families of this new world government that has been established in different continents or whatnot. But how it operates, how it works, how it's gone to that point is so intriguing. And seeing this these sort of feudal battles that are somewhat samurai in nature, mm-hmm. but in a modern day world, technology futuristic, but still kind of like, what happened? Yeah. What, where, where are people at? It's a really cool book. And Michael Lark, again, yeah. perfectly casted, perfectly. I think they work together on Gotham Central, Greg Rucka and, yeah. and Michael Lark. You're and right. it's a perfectly cast team for this type of book. Highly recommend it if, you, if you've if you never, if you are looking for something to read from Image, but I, I def, desperately want this in a full-on collection. No, it's a good shout. Like it's, yeah, it's one of those books I think like it, it needs to be complete, even if... Even if you've got part of it, we're still not there yet. There should, I think, just be at least a volume four for the hardcovers if you have that much. But if you haven't, it's perfect for compendium. Yeah, I think I think they've gotten to thirty issues. Some, well, somewhere around there, maybe. It 40? looks like twenty six, and then there's Lazarus okay. X plus sixty six, which is six issues. There's a yeah, couple of source that's... books. Oh no, twenty seven, twenty eight. We're here up to twenty eight, and then there's Lazarus Risen, which goes up to seven. There's a whole bunch of minis, and it looks like they happen the same time. It's, there's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, I think it's a compendium time. Yeah, we'll or see. a nice chunky omnibus. Give us a chunky omni. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Take, you're number three. That's so funny. Chunky omnibus. Give, give us, give us, us. <laughs> So my numero three o is zero. What I meant to do before we came on was look up zero and just double check the name how you pronounce the arts that the writer's name because i i've never known but i don't know if it's like alice cott so he used to write yes yes alice alice cott I, yeah yeah that's fine he could be write... alish oh could depending it depending on where it could be alish okay alice cott fine no but i don't think anyone should be offended by that okay hopefully if i have i'm terribly sorry there's art on there by geordie belair Mateus Santa Luca. In fact, there's a ton of artists. I think it might even be a different artist per issue. So at zero, it says Edward Zero was the best spy the agency had, and then he realized he was working for the wrong side. That's literally the summary that they've put in there. <laughs> but it's it's 18, I think it's eight, yeah, 18 issues. And the the covers alone are quite experimental and look quite kind of anti-establishment. And some of it looks like kind of graffiti, some of it looks like Escher. It's just, it's a real mix in there. But yeah, it looks like a kind of a spy series. And I know very little about it, but he wrote, he wrote, he wrote Secret Avengers. And it yeah. was the post Brubaker Secret Avengers. Or post Yeah, with Michael Remender. Walsh. Yeah, that sounds right. Because it was quite distinctive looking art. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to read it. And I tried it and it was like, no, this is, re- this is really good. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's got a bit of a, a knack for writing some quite quite rebellious, disruptive kind of storytelling. <laughs> and that always intrigues me. I know very little about it. I know there was a lot of praise and a lot of hype. It seemed to be very, very highly rated. So it looks like quite a violent, smart, anti-establishment series. It's zero, 18 issues, started in 2013 by possibly Alez Cott. Apologies if not. And a whole heap of artists. I think Chula Lote is somewhere in there. Trad Moore. Yeah, Michael Walsh. There's a whole bunch. That's cool. whole bunch That's of cool. artists. So it just looks like it's going to be a fun book. That's cool. Nice. Nice pick. Yeah, that Secret Avengers was a sleeper. Because it, it doesn't have that superhero artwork aesthetic the same way your usual Avengers book does. But Michael Walsh is a masterful storyteller. Tell us what's going on, Dave. New to the Omniverse, reading orders. We have the Fantastic Four. So that's 1981 to 1984. It's a nice little chunk of pre-John Byrne. But it also goes into the beginning of the John Byrne run. So it's the beginning of his run to the kind of first year of Secret Wars. JLA Avengers has been included, which is the four-issue miniseries. But because it title swaps, I kind of cheated and treated it as a crossover. (laughs) Subscribers get the What to Read Before Secret Wars 
1984 entry. Um, I oh. just have to shout BC Scrubs out there for saying loving the subscriber exclusive. Thank you, dude, and thanks for the support. Podcast and video. We've got the top 10 love stories, which was our last live episode. And I can imagine a few people have gone like, oh, really? Jump on. It's not what you think. We've also got a podcast exclusive episode of new manga spotlight with raf reads which is fantastic he's given us the overview of what we need to pick up in the first quarter of the year manga wise features we have the kickstarter spotlight for early march again there's some really really nice stuff in there just wanted to say a thank you to everyone we met at Showmasters at the weekend we had some people sign up to our subscriber exclusive materials which was lovely really really engaged people some really really uh, lovely people to chat to we also had a bit of an ongoing thing where if people signed up at the weekend they were up to win a nice pile of books nice pile what? of books so nice. we will announce the winner very very shortly um and also we launched our new merch which we will have better shots of soon when we add them to the new omniverse shop on the site <laughs> How's your energy going? Oh, my energy is, I got to say, we're getting some good sunshine in this strange winter that we have up here in Canada, which has been relatively warm. So I've got some sunshine in my mind. It feels like it's magical. Ooh. <laughs> Why do you ask? Uh, well, I don't know about you, but I find that the thing that keeps my energy up through these episodes is a little bit of magic mind. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. You don't say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Funny. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that works for me. It helps keep me going through the episode. So in the morning, I take a little bit of the old magic mind and that perks me up for the rest of the day. Uh, a little less of this, because this ain't good for years. But a little more it's magic not... mind. Hit you with the magic greens. Magic mind is better. Yeah. That's right. Hit you with the greens. Get your day started right. Yep. Follow all nice. the right stuff. Makes you feel better. Makes you feel motivated. And actually... When we're wrapped up here at the end of this episode, I'm going to be able to sleep just fine. Nice. Now, if people who are watching or listening to the show want to get their hands on some magic mind, where can they, how do they do it? Well, what you need to do, Eric, is you go head on over to www.magicmind.com. And if you put your order in, when you get to the ordering page, there is a bit where you can, you can get an extra little chunk off. And that comes from us, from us to you, because we loves you in a very platonic and legal way. Yes. If you put in the code Omniverse20, you get an extra amount off. And it's already, uh, if you if you subscribe to it as a monthly thing, which is what I do, if you subscribe monthly to Magic Mind, you get a really big chunk off anyway. But if you put in Omniverse20, you get even more off. So you can get nice. that delivered to your door. And every day you get that little shot of goodness and it helps you sleep and it helps you stay awake and it keeps you energized. Nothing like a little shot of goodness to help you sleep, right? We back into the uh, countdown. We're back in this. Okay. I got an idea, but I don't know how I would execute it. So what I would like is something that is more of a, like a real wish list. And that's a Mark Miller compendium Ooh. of some kind. Of his image stuff. Now, I don't know if any of his stories or universes crisscross over where it would make sense, but he's got some like six issues like Huck, or uh, I, I think he's done two series of Prodigy and he's had the Chrononauts or, you know, Jupiter's Legacy. Like he's got these little pockets of places that he works in, and they're not super long runs necessarily, but I'd like to have them in like a concise place where you could read maybe a certain portion of it, of his work from image. Cause it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, they all seem like pilots for Netflix shows, right? Yeah. In a lot of ways, but I mean, they're fun rides. They're fun six issues to get there. I really liked reborn that he did with um, Greg Capullo. They're fun little Six issues where you can see Mark Miller work with a really cool artist, Raphael Albuquerque, or um, oh, who was it on Starlight? It's a it, that's a difficult name that I wouldn't be able to feel comfortable pronouncing. But rather you than me. Another, that's <laughs> that's another great book, and I'm like, you know, he 
there was a time where he kind of got sort of like slack for or flack for little things he did. Like he was a little polarizing amongst comic fans or some people really were fans and others were like, ah, but I found myself being a fan of the majority of things I've read from him. Hmm. That's just me. Like, I like the authority. I love ultimates. And a lot of his image stuff is on civil war. Like, come on, it's good <laughs> shit. So I'd love a Mark Miller compendium of some kind. I just don't know how you would, what you would put in it or what universes would blend. Well, they have done Big Game, which was a the series he did with Pepe Larraz, which actually com- it included a lot of those other characters, like the characters from Wanted. Apparently Huck is in it. I can't remember. A Nemesis is in it. So I think it's kind of implied that all that stuff takes place in the same universe. Funnily enough, literally in the last 24 hours, I saw that they were releasing a library edition at Dark Horse of his Ambassadors series. Okay, no, so no, I don't know if it's jump into Dark Horse or I don't think I thought he did the ambassadors at Image. So I don't know. I think you may get your wish. I'm just not sure it's going to be an image. OK, yeah, it was it was just like a shot in the dark where I'm mm. like, I got a bunch of six issue trades of Mark Miller that are just a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah, but it would be nice to have like a nice collection of his stuff there. Yeah, I haven't read it shout. all. Yeah, I haven't read it all. There's a lot of things I've, I'm missing, and I, I'll get to. But, yeah, he's got a lot of his independent stuff that's that's fun mm. and familiar but unique in its own right. And so bombastic. It's like all John Wick sort of <laughs> ridiculousness. Yeah. You know, it's Mark oh, it's Miller. shameless. It's, it's completely shameless. Yeah. yeah. He's Scottish. It's fine. You can do what you like. <laughs> that's right. So let's see what happens. Let's see if something like that comes out. I don't know. That'd be great. It's, 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 funnily enough, I have because of the release of Big Game, I did wonder if they might do something like that. So I think that's a really, really good call, man. And I'd, I'd you, definitely pick you. something like that up. All right. Numero quattro. All right, mama. Here's my little guilty repeat. And I do drop this series in occasionally. Though I think I dropped it in. I haven't dropped it in since we've done Omniverse. I don't think. So I'm going to go for it tonight with this. It seems to make perfect sense. This is uh, it's two series. It was a 15 issue series followed by a 17 issue kind of relaunch 2015 and 2017. It's by one of my favorite writers who's John Arcudi and one of my favorite artists who did volume one is James Harron. It's Rumble. It's I have it currently in six trades, but oh, imagine if that was one big old chunga. Look at it. <laughs> yeah, so it's um, it's a really odd series, and I loved it. So the first, I think these are the, the three volumes that were drawn by James Harron. James Harron did Ultra Mega. Uh, I think he's done a few other mainstream bits as well. He's got a very unique style, and his creature creation comes into this a lot. It's basically about a, a, a straw god shows up at a bar in some American city, and he's having a fight with some demon in there. And then the guy who works behind the bar gets drawn into this activity and into whatever's going on in his life as as the as Rathrak, I think that's how you pronounce it, who's the main character, this this god who's lost his body, is trying to reclaim it. And he's trying to help him. This guy's best friend tags along as well. He's a wanker. And also his girlfriend, who's not very happy that he's getting himself involved in all this kind of stuff. Yes, this uh, is Rumble. But then what, what it did was it stopped after 15 issues. And then it started again with a different artist. It was David Rubin. Now, I'd never seen David Rubin before. And it's quite a different style. And it took me a while. But since then, I've actually really, really grown to love David Rubin stuff. He did Ether with Matt Kent. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows it. So, yeah, these these are the, the issues drawn by... Uh, David Rubin. It's it's a bit of a different style, but it's still great. And actually, there's one issue in particular as well that features another very familiar sword wielding head lopper. That's cool. Technically, those two That's worlds cool. are the same. It's That's brilliant. Cool. It's very very funny. You can imagine it being made. It's, I I don't really like it when people say like they justify a great comic by saying you can imagine it being made into a TV show. Like that somehow makes it better. It doesn't great comic is a great comic but you can imagine it being made into a kind of funny tv show 
Yeah, <laughs> some, some would be great for television shows, mm. for sure. You can see, like, people would be into... If this was on TV, people would all watch this. Yeah, if Walking you're recommending dead, a TV right? show, people are more likely to go, this is a good TV show. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whereas if you go, like, this is a great What's comic, good? they just go, yeah. <laughs> what do you yeah, smell? Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, it's a shame, but that's the truth. It's uh, it's Rumble, it's great fun, it's gods punching each other outside bars. <laughs> Yay. That's cool. Okay, this is uh, my number four is a Donny Cates book. It's crossover oh, with yeah. Jeff Shaw, and I think they they might have wrapped it up. What I have read of it, it's very much breaking the fourth wall. It's It's a superhero comic book with all the comic book creators in it. And it's a basically a murder mystery because the characters of the comic book creators, the worlds are colliding almost like a here I go again. Crisis on Infinite Earths. Parallel universes are inter, in, uh, intercepting or colliding with each other. But it's like the comic book characters universe. And you can see that the way that they're drawn looks like pulp paper. It's got that sort of four color effect on them ah. and that's how you know who's from a comic book who is supposed to be in the real world very self-referential it knows what it, it it's making fun of itself which is part of the fun but still giving you an intriguing comic book plot line and there's all kinds of really cool guest appearances and in interesting ways comic book writers dealing with themselves whenever they've perhaps written themselves in a comic book like they actually have to fight their own avatar it's interesting stuff it includes the entire image universe which is cool so there's like savage dragon and madman and it's a cool book love it can't wait to see how it finishes hopefully they stick the landing but yes crossover i think donny cage jeff shaw i thought that was it we're after 13 issues maybe that is it no i felt I like know. it ended on a cliffhanger okay. but we should, so there's only 13 issues? Is that all that's, it that's listed there? It stops at 13 and it says that was May 22. See? But it doesn't mean... But don't don't, he was in an accident, so maybe... Yeah, I, that that must have been... that must There must be a reason, because I, I feel like it definitely... I, remember, I, I don't remember it ending in a way where I'm like, oh, well, that could be an end if you want it to be. I, I remember it being like, I want to know what happens next. Oh. All right. Yeah. So hopefully it, it uh, comes to a conclusion. And if it has come to a conclusion, I'll reread it and eat my own words and be like, forget it. There's 13 <laughs> issues. Put it out there in a hardcover. I'll still t I'll still I'll still take it in the, the, the hardcover. 13 issues is good. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. It's worthwhile. You'll laugh. You'll think it's really cool. Kind of be scared. There's moments where you're like, oh, oh, shit. Like a creator encountering himself. In some moments, you'd just be like, yeah, they would not like each other, would they? <laughs> right? Weird. It's hard to explain. I do Anyways, want to try it out. It's weird. I really want to try it out. It's a good shout. All right. Take it away. Oh, wow, dude. It's my last one for tonight. I'm going to try and offer up something new. I haven't read it, but I've wanted to for quite some time. This is spread. There was a period of time when it seemed like Image went through a phase of releasing titles that just had one word, names. <laughs> And it was kind of hard to keep track of, like, what was that one? It wasn't like a catchy thing where you combine two words and you go, ooh, it's poetic. It was just a one-word name. And this was this was spread. For example, the new Rick Remeda series is called Napalm Lullaby. You see, you take those two words, yeah? Sounds kind of cool together. Mix them up like a cocktail. But this one is, it's spread. Uh, so the synopsis here for the first trade paperback says, 10 years ago, we dug too deep and unleashed something we couldn't control, something that twisted and warped every living thing in its path, something that remade the world in its own image, the spread. One man has found a child who could save the world, but he has to fight monsters, raiders, cannibals, religious fanatics, and one cranky baby to do it. It was a 2014 series, went on for 25 issues. It came out as five trade paperbacks. The covers are quite nasty. <laughs> This spread thing seems to make things look demonic, twisted, red and bloody and pussy. And again, yeah. that appeals to me <laughs> for some reason. It's sick. Um, it's something sick, very Dave. clearly wrong. It's by Justin Jordan, who I think did Luther Strode. But he's also known for Summoner's War, 
Dead Body Road, a few other books books for for Image, and his it's one of those things. It's like oh, it's like a bit of an epic. I want I like a bit of an epic. And as we're talking about those longer runs, and they are, you're right. Like what you were saying earlier, it's quite hard to come by those slightly longer runs from Image, but this is one. Yes, I would like to see spread. Why not just hit me up with an oversized hardcover, please? And I'll take that. 25 issues. Super chunk in my face. Thank you. Good night, Mama. <laughs> nice. Spread. Spread for me. That's the Andre 2000 song. Uh, who, who are the creators of that again? Yeah. So it was... Oh, you've asked me that question. It was... It's Justin Jordan as the writer... And then artists, it says Kyle Strom, who I'm not overly familiar with, and Philippe Sobrero. Again, I'm not overly familiar with. So some interesting looking... I mean, the covers are something else. It's part of the appeal for me is those covers. They look nasty. And I just... There's something about gore in comics that, like, how do you make horror work in a comic? Because you always think, like, does horror work? Like, how do you jump scares? And I think we talked about that once before. But mm-hmm. part of the thing, the the horror and comics and making it work is just by making you either so disgusted that you literally want to vom, or implying it very very heavily. And this goes into the disgusting you as much as possible <laughs> territory. My number five. Well, there's a lot of stuff that I guess is left on the list that I wasn't sure if we would um, have any crossover. I thought for sure you might list uh, revival. I know you've got the deluxes of those. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I mentioned it fairly recently, so I thought I'd leave it. Yeah, I, I actually want those myself because you've spoken so highly about it. So it was something I was considering. But I'm going to put, I've mentioned again this book in, in some other episodes where it was befitting, but it's a great series. It's Firepower, Robert Kirkman and Chris Somney. When that wraps up or whenever they decide to put the first half of it in a bound volume, it's such a great book. The first half? I'm not sure how long the the series is going to go, if it's wrapped up or... Yeah, it's wrapping wrapping up. up. Yeah, so volume two of the oversized hardcovers will be out in a couple of months. Okay. Yeah, so it's not too long. I would love to get that cover to cover. Yeah. The whole thing, one trade. If you compendium or something. Definitely. I was brilliant in a compendium format. Dude, if if you haven't got the oversized hardcover... I have it. Oh, you have, you have, you have. I thought you did. That's why I, yeah, that's why I'm, it's something that I'm constantly looking for. Like, I I want to read the next half of this story. I I liked it so much. And it was one of those times reading it, kind of like a lady killer, where you find yourself, I'm almost done this, this book. And I just want more. Uh And I know it's going to take a year or a couple months at the very least. Or, you know, you you know, you're going to be waiting a while. So like the paper girls, I'm happy that they put out a cover-to-cover version of it where you could get that whole story and just experience it all. I, I can't wait for Firepower to be like that. It's a great book. And Chris Somney has this such an interesting style that, again, it's not that typical, proto- prototypical superhero found muscles, but it's it's got so much motion to it mm. that you find yourself... Like it flows. There's a flow to his storytelling that's very hard to explain and just experience it. So yeah, firepower. Nice way to wrap it up. I hope everybody had a a good time hanging out with us, going through our most wanted image. Oh, talk to me, Dave. We've got a few suggestions in the chat. Yes. Give us your suggestions. Yes. Uh, So Kfire869, who's been on it tonight, hitting us with deets, all sorts. Thank you so much. Has quite the list so department of truth whenever it finishes wants to get that whole thing collected radiant black radiant black is coming out in oversized hardcover cover format soon so radiant black year one will be coming out in larger format east of west has been but obviously hasn't been out available for a while it's quite hard to get hold of wicked and the divine gideon falls no that's not done as a compendium it's been done as two oversized hardcovers as, as k5 says uh, and a second saga compendium when it's finally finished so that's quite the wish list Meat Trunk says Transformers isn't good for you. You're absolutely right. It's not good for you. Uh, I, <laughs> I've read the first five issues and it's fucking awful. Oh, no. It's it, so it, bad. Is that Daniel Warren Johnson? Yeah, I was horrified. Um, it's so bad. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. But people, a lot of people are loving it, but they've never read Transformers before or know anything about it. 
So we're like, well, okay, I'd... if that gets them into it, then great. But it's it's a very after having the IDW series with a very fleshed, well fleshed out world, world, literal universe in terms of like the politics of Cybertron and all the relationships and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it took a little while to get that going and the beginnings weren't necessarily the best. So, you know, you've got to give this energy on universe time, but I have not been liking it. It's, it's not good. Would I like it as a Daniel Warren Johnson fan? It seems to be getting them to use a lot of wrestling moves. So you may like it. I wonder if you can read it and actually make sense of it because it just, I see. it's not transformers to me. Yeah, and I think I think um, for some things that's kind of the key with Daniel Warren Johnson stuff. It's like it's not going to be what you are expecting it to be necessarily. Even Wonder Woman, Dead Earth. I love that book, but yeah, me too. Yeah, is it is it Wonder Woman as you know her to be? Man, maybe, maybe not. But it's Daniel Warren Johnson's kind of vision. Yeah. So I wonder if that if he's taking liberties like that with Transformers. Perhaps I don't know. I mean, I read Void but Rivals as, purist, as well, which was like the 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 series that kind of introduced the Energon universe, and it's not the best thing Kirkman's done. It feels like something he wrote ages ago, and he's kind of pulled it out of a drawer. Just no thanks. Not liking it. I haven't read the GI Joe yeah. stuff yet. You're a Transformer snob. Just admit it. Well, take off the S and you're absolutely right. A total Transformers <laughs> snob. But I just, my expectations, what I loved the most about IDW stuff was that it literally built that, it built everything and it built character and everyone was very defined. In this, no one's defined it. You could switch a character out and you wouldn't notice who was who. It's just big robots kicking each other in the face. If that's what you want, then you're in. If you want more than yeah. that, I wouldn't touch it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you would, Eric. <laughs> it plays well with it. Yeah, I probably if it if it's wrestling referenced, probably like it. You may well like it, and I hope you do if you try it, because it's it's a shame when you pick something up and it doesn't really work for you. But sure, I thought I'd go digital. Otherwise, the Energon Universe would have been on this top five tonight. Yeah, you because know, I've been an, I've I've read it in digital because I literally wanted to get. A collected, the chunky collector edition when they start releasing those, but now I don't think I'll get one. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave mm. those. I want to. Radiant Black was another one that I was gonna put on there. It would be a complete blind buy because I've been wanting to try it, but I'm like, this is gonna be a big, big story, and I want to read it in its completion. Mm. But uh, yeah, that was another one. Good, good shout. I didn't want to leave that one out. East of West, I tried it and I felt stupid. I felt like I didn't get it. I think it's a lot of cool moments glued together when he dissects it past that. It doesn't mean anything because it's Jonathan Hickman and that's how he writes badly. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. <laughs> Thank you everybody for listening. We love you all. Thanks for hanging out with us on Twitch. For those that are watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, the like button on all the podcast platforms. Thank you for tuning in. Omniverse comics dot guide. Nice. Touch for now. Thanks, yours. Oh.